occasionally as I'm driving the E90 around town, I will get a half engine light and I will feel reduced power. This basically means that the turbos are deactivated. The bypass valves are fully open and you have reduced power. There could be a number of things that could cause this. When I first bought the car, it was actually the boost control solenoids that were bad and I ended up changing those. This time it's something else. And the way you figure this out, the first step is to hook up a BMW scanner and read the codes. So we're gonna start there. All right, I've got the latest scanner that Launch has sent me, the Creator Elite, hooked up to the car. Gonna check out what's wrong. All right, let's do health report. Takes a little while to get in here, but then the actual health report's pretty fast. So let's see, variable camshaft timing control intake, cold start, boost pressure control deactivation. Those are essentially the same problems I had about a month ago. This is the second time that uh, the half engine light has shown up for me. So that's telling me that the intake uh, Vano solenoid might be sticking. It's got some problems. So I'm gonna take that one, that one out. I'm actually gonna take both of them out and I'm gonna clean them and see if that solves the problem. So step one, we need to get this uh, intake snorkel off. Normally there will be two T20 bolts right here. The ears have long since broken off, so mine's just sort of in place like that. So the Vano solenoids are right here on the front of the engine. The top one is gonna be the intake side. The bottom one's gonna be for the exhaust side. It's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt that's just holding it in. Here's the bottom one for the exhaust. Now all the way, there it is. Okay, there's that one. And then the other one's just gonna be right above it right here. Did I get on it? Yeah, I got it. It dropped inside the socket. Okay, there's two right there. So we'll do the top one first. I think what I will do is pull off the connector. So the, um, the top connector is the straight one and the bottom connector has a little right angle thing on it. So I'm gonna reach down here and sort of twist and pull it out. Let's, I don't know if some oil is gonna come out. We'll towel just in case, just in case. And not really, not really. So um, there's a little O-ring that's stuck in to the front of the engine right there. So I reached in and grabbed it and then uh, there should be another seal that will come out on the thing. So this is the flat seal and this is the little O-ring that gets stuck inside the engine right there. So grab both of those, pull them out. I did buy new seals and I'm gonna change them. I'm also gonna grab out the bottom one. I wanna keep these sort of, uh, I wanna keep note of which one's which because this is the one that's giving the codes, the top one, the intake one. So I'm gonna make note of that. They essentially are the same parts, so it's okay if you mix them up, but I don't wanna mix them up just because I'm only getting the codes in one, one of these. All right, I've got the intake solenoid here that we're gonna look at first, and before I clean it, I think I'm gonna test it. I, I don't suspect that it's dead, but I'm just gonna show you what it's like. I've got my bench top power supply over here set up to uh, provide 12 volts. We'll hook the positive here and we will push, hook the negative here. Hang on a second. So you can hear it. It's drawing about one amp of current. That was what the exhaust one is, is drawing. Oops, that came off. And I can hear it moving, I can see it moving, and it's moving. It doesn't move very much, and you can't really see it from this side. Let me move this over you can see maybe that the inside piston moves that much, just a little bit. And okay, let's think about why people are saying that uh, you can clean these and fix your problem. Well, that originates like a lot of BMW lore on the message boards. Somebody, you know, posts something and they say like, oh, you should try cleaning them first because it's cheap and easy and that might fix your problem. 
And, you know, people just uh, eventually a bunch of YouTubers make a video about it and it becomes like, you know, the way to fix this problem. And that's why I, I, even I'm guilty of doing that sometimes, you know, like sometimes you, you have to stop, especially with forum knowledge and you have to sort of think about, you know, does that make sense? Is this re really going to fix your problem? Why is this happening? Um, it might. It depends on the situation. It depends on on what exactly is going wrong, what, what the situation is. The idea here is that maybe every once in a while this thing just sticks when it's supposed to open up. I suppose it could happen. The oil varnish does build up and that could be an issue, but um, who really knows? I suspect that replacing the thing is really what's going to solve it once and for all. But hey, let's try cleaning it because it really doesn't hurt anything and it doesn't cost anything. This is brake cleaner, by the way. Any kind of automotive solvent is going to work. If you've got mass airflow cleaner, I'm sure that'll work. If you've got carb cleaner, that's going to work. This is like a metal part. Anything that's really going to dissolve oil and varnish should be good. Fuel injection cleaner if you got that. So <clears throat> I'm just going to spend some time cleaning this up, blowing it out a little bit. I don't really think you're doing much of anything here. You could, I suppose, uh, open the valve and clean it. Just supply power to it. Now it's open. Like that. I just sprayed solvent in the air and I'm generating a spark by doing that. So there's a little bit of a risk there, but it wasn't a lot of solvent and there's not a lot of vapor in the air. So I'm not that concerned here. Uh, yeah, so that's about what you do. Spray the thing, clean it a little bit and uh, think that you've solved your problem. And then a month later, you're going to have the same code happening and you're going to be down on power again, probably. I don't mean to be, you know, such a naysayer, but I don't know. I just think that my experience tells me that that's eventually what you're going to have to end up doing anyway. You can get aftermarket ones of these for $50 each, and that's probably, it's probably going to work fine. This is just a little piston that goes back and forth, you know? Anyway, I'll finish cleaning it up and I'll finish cleaning that one up. I'll remember to put the same one back in. That way, if the code comes back, I'll make sure it comes back for the intake solenoid. If you mix them up, then the code could be coming back for the exhaust solenoid and kind of confuse you. So I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll remember to use, stick them in the same, in the same place. That is the part number for the seals. In case you're wondering, do I think you need to replace them? Probably not. Probably not. These, I mean, in this case, these seals look pretty good. The O-ring is a little bit flattened out, but, um, and this is, this guy is a little hard. It, well, it's supposed to be hard. <laughs> so you, I, I, you probably can get away with not replacing them, but they were not expensive. So pretty easy. That guy goes there. This one goes here and that's it. So I definitely see lots of dirt and debris. So I'm going to really carefully clean that out, making sure it doesn't go in the engine. Okay, cool. Very good. So I always like to put a little um, silicone paste, dielectric tune-up grease on an O-ring, helps it slide in super easy without any complaint. This is the exhaust solenoid. I'll just slide that guy in. Just like that. turning the hole so that the uh, bolt will go in okay. and the trick is just getting that hole to line up correctly. So incidentally, this is going to be more difficult if you've got a later model N54 engine where you're, you have the oil cooler lines kind of right here in your way. It's still possible to do it without removing those lines. It's just going to be a little more difficult, more things in your way.
This is just very little amount of torque, a little quarter turn once it's tight, or a little eighth turn once it's tight, and that's it. So again, the one with the right angle, the connector with the right angle, let me get you this light here. The connector with the right angle, which is this one, looks like that. That one is on the bottom there, bottom solenoid. The straight one is for the top solenoid, just like that. Put that back in. So now I will just use my scan tool to clear the codes and hopefully the problem doesn't come back. If it does, you go ahead and replace the solenoid that's throwing the code. In my case, I would probably replace both of them because it's just good insurance. One final note, if you clean your Vano solenoids and that doesn't help and you replace your Vano solenoids and that still doesn't help, then very likely the cause of your problem lies in your camshafts, particularly these two square cut O-rings that are designed to seal this passage right here. Um, this is essentially what the Vano solenoid is doing. It's either directing oil through this channel, which then exits through this channel, or it's reversing that. Oil goes in here and comes out here. That oil is eventually making its way into the cam phaser, which is what's retarding or advancing the cam depending on the direction of the oil flow. So like I mentioned, there's these steel square cut O-rings here and here. They're designed to seal this chamber and keep the oil inside this passage. But what happens is those O-rings cut grooves into the, the aluminum right here, and that causes oil loss. And you can see that uh, these cams are actually good. I have a set of another set of good ones here. And um, if yours are bad, there will be a lip where you where that will catch your fingernail. And some lip, you know, might not be all that bad. That might not be causing such an oil loss that you will have this problem. But um, severe lippage, very very likely, will lead to uh, this kind of issue. So. Um, hopefully that's not what's wrong on yours. I've already replaced my cams with um, good bearing ledges, so I know that's not the problem on mine anymore. Um, and also the square cut O-rings have been replaced by Teflon seals as well on mine. So this particular part of the problem is behind me. That's why I know it's the Vano solenoids, but um, this could be what's wrong on your car ultimately if uh, fixing the Vano solenoids doesn't ultimately solve the problem. I do have a DIY on how to uh, replace this and I will link Link it down in the description. Fair warning, it's very involved. Hope, hopefully this is not your problem though. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more. I'm the 50s Kid. Thanks a lot for watching.